Hey everyone, Vadim here of Epic Mind Studio. Today, I'm gonna do something different. I'm gonna show you my Throwback Thursdays images. What does this mean? That means I'm gonna go back in time and show you what I have done in the past and break down the behind the scenes, the stories, the anecdotes, a bit of the, the shot layout, what I did, the retouching, all that. So stay tuned. If you enjoy this, like and subscribe right there down below so I can make some more videos for you guys and stay tuned and enjoy. We're gonna start today with a shot um, from a long time ago, I think. It was shot in 2007. This is a shot I did for my first jewelry client, actually. Um, yeah, back in 2007 probably about two, three years into my career or so as a photographer. And yeah, let's jump right into Photoshop. Uh, all right, so this image here, I would say it was one of my glorious images that I used in my portfolio, I think up to this day pretty much, which is freaking fantastic. It's a pyramid style shot, it's built up together. The first time I think I'd really done that, my client, Gravure Commitment, had commissioned this shot to make kind of a architectural, stylized, strong, bold image. And I took on the challenge and said, okay, let's see how I can do this. I've never done it before. I've usually just been shooting static e-commerce style rings back in the day. And so have it. I tried out to ask my mom, who was an art teacher at the time, like, do you have any of that blue stuff? That, you know, you stick posters on the wall with, you know? Oh, blue tack, my mom asked. Okay, okay, sure. Here's a pack of blue tack. So I tried this out so I had his rings had an idea of more or less what I wanted um, basically wanted to go from the fattest ring to the, from the bottom to the smallest ring on the top and that's it so I used a ton of blue tack as you guys can see in the shot right over here if I zoom in it's got tons of it and for the keen-eyed people out there you will notice that back in 2007 I did not focus stack at all my images so it's got quite a shallow depth of field. And if we zoom in even more, um, just before I do that, actually, let me give you some background info. For this shot, I used the Canon 5D Mark I. It's a 12.8 megapixel camera. So the first of its generation um, before the milestone 5D Mark II came out, which was the holy grail of like the new generation of cameras that can also do video. But anyways, coming back to this, I also shot it with the Canon uh, Tilt Shift 90 millimeter lens. Um, trying to get more depth of field by just changing the little focal plane of the, the lens, if that's the right term. Anyways, not going to be too technical. This is not a technical review. It's more about what have I done in the past? So that's it. Back in the day, I was still relatively new at photography, having come from a programmer's background. Um, I wasn't too aware about the fraction and all the crap that can bring out in your photography. If you zoom in, Let's see, I'm at actually 200%. At 100%, you'll notice everything is pretty much smudged. There's nothing really sharp. The diamonds are pretty dull, crappy looking. Um, you can see there's still some dings and stuff. These were not fresh samples, unfortunately, from production, but you know, they were just the samples that go around showing to clients. I shot this, if you look at the camera data, if I go to File Info, so as you guys can see, I shot this actually on my birthday in 2007. That's hilarious, man. Yeah, so I shot EOS 5D, 90 millimeter at one two hundredth of a second at F22. Ugh. Uh, why did you do that? Now that I know better, and now that you guys know better through all the million tutorials out there, you do not shoot past like F11, F13. You get a thing called a fraction your lens becomes less sharp. I didn't know that back then. So I tried to get everything in focus by stopping down my lens as much as I could, or almost as much as I could. And anyways, but back then it worked, it turned out great. As you can see, the pyramid looks pretty good. If I go back out, uh, my white balance is quite suspect. I'm not even sure what software I was using to uh, work with back in the day. Could have been Capture One actually, but it could have even been uh, the default Canon software. I'm really not sure. 
So going back to the shot. So I shot it on white plexiglass, as you guys can see by the pretty perfect reflection, using very simple lighting. As you can see, um, it's there's not much diffusion going on, so it's soft boxes. So you can see those one soft box on the right, one soft box on the left, and it looks like I stuck in a piece of little foam core or cardboard just to break the reflection right over here. And uh, that's it. So one soft box was pretty much more at an angle towards it, and the other one was a little bit straighter on. Um, if I recall, I've always used basically a size uh, two foot by three foot uh, soft boxes. Uh, I'm not sure what that is in centimeters, sorry for my metric friends. Us in Canada, we're kind of still screwed up in between imperial, metric, blah, 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 blah. Anyways, and that's it. And I used another, a third soft box on the back just to white out the whole region uh, at an angle, hence at a 45 degree angle to the camera setup. So that's why you can see some black on the side. Uh, the magic really was just stacking this together using the blue tack. And uh, that's that. So once I shot it, I brought it into Photoshop. And so that was the final shot I had provided the client. Again, gravure commitment from back in the day, now known as, I think, Atlantic engraving. The shot here, as you can tell, it's quite blue, but that's what the client wanted at the time. It's a stylistic decision, a bit like Tiffany's kind of did for so many years in her imagery, putting blue on everything. And I think this is where this came from. Um, the previous uh, ad agency this client had hired, hired was doing that already to their previous beauty shots. And to save money, he took Joe Schmo of them, uh, newbie. So my prices were actually quite low versus the uh, ad agency. So I was given for mandate to emulate a similar style, a similar look to this other uh, photographer's work. And who at the time was shooting for the Burke's uh, and Sun's uh, company. And yeah, so what can I say about this retouching here? Well, there's not all that much. I mean, uh, if you look, if I'm gonna switch back and forth between unretouched and retouched, I obviously cleaned up the metal quite a bit, as you guys can see, look at here, especially all the little scratches, the dings. That was back in the day, just pure old clone stamping. And there was not much that I, knew how to do else besides that. Um, I did fix the diamonds, tried to make them a little bit straighter uh, than the way they were inserted originally. As you can see, I've replaced some diamonds actually. If you look at the main stone right over here, it's actually replaced from, I'm not too sure where. Uh, maybe another shot I took previously and I liked the diamond better. Uh, I took, I think I took a whole bunch of shots of this series just to get the nicest parts and I combined them. Or maybe not. Let's see. Let's go back in time. So, um, I don't know if this is the original retouching file that I had. Um, so, that's that. Okay, let's go back here. Yeah, so this is basically without the diamonds being reinserted. So, the default diamonds, not very sharp. Everything looks like mud, mushy, gross. Um, anyways, let's go back out. So, general gist I cleaned up all the scratches. I added more contrast to the diamonds or grabbed them from other shots just to make them a little bit more popping looking, a little bit more contrast. Since the smaller you go, the more contrast you really want to see a little bit in those major stones. On the top of the band, if you guys have noticed right away, uh, I drew in a nice little gradient reflection since I found it was just too much black. See, I called it top band. See, so remove it before, after, before, after. It makes a hell of a difference, makes it a hell of a lot more fun to look at instead of that big black splotch. If you zoom out completely and look at it without it, your eye just sees that black hole, almost like an eyeball looking back at you. You don't want to have that. Um, you want a balanced image where the contrasts are throughout the image. Um, I inserted their logo inside the bands. That was a simple, I guess, they gave me their font. I think it was Skia back in the day. Uh, and I applied a little debossing filter and warped it just to have a little bit of a shape that follows the, the band. And that's really it. Um, yeah, let's see here, Her gravure, the top band before, after. Oh, here we go, here look at the diamonds. I did insert them after all, look at that. The fun I used to do. 
So before, after. Let me zoom in 200% or 300% so you can really see. So before, after. Yeah, it looks like I copy pasted them. Like this is the same diamond as this one, which is the same diamond as that one. They are, and this is the same diamond as that, just flipped left, right, and so is this one. There you go, it's all the same diamond. That's what I used to do back in the day. <sighs> Actually, sometimes that's all right, guys. You can do that. Even today, I've seen some retouchers, they go overboard. They just go copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. But I, what I recommend that you guys do is at least rotate the stone, maybe change a couple of flecks inside just so it doesn't look obviously copy pasted. Come on, you can't cut all the corners. Okay, I did that back then. This is embarrassing, guys. But anyways, I don't mind it. It worked for the time, the client loved it. He used these images for numerous years. The metal looked amazing. Um, let's see what's this little inside copy. Oh, it looks like I had originally a darker version on the inside and I lightened it up to see the logo a bit better. So just blurred, made lighter. And that's really it. I put a, applied a gradient on the uh, faded the reflection. And that was really it. I mean, uh, that's the behind the scenes of this little shot. Um, don't know what else I can really say. Um, and that's it. Going back on that, maybe the last little thing about the blue tint, adding a bit of blue cyan to your metals will often make it look just a lot more metallic, I find. Um, oftentimes I'll just add a little touch, maybe not as much as this, since this is just ridiculous. It's redonkulous, I would even say. Just look at these little things. And uh, so that's my first little entry on this project that I did in 2007. Hope you liked it. If you enjoyed it, write down below and uh, I'll make some more.